Mark chapter four, our topic today, uh, my title, um, with well, a topic today is entitled Storm Theology. We're talking about storm theology today. And you ask, well, what is storm theology? Storm theology is what you believe about God when things in your, when things in your life go horribly wrong. And all of us, whether you realize it or not, every person here today, we have a storm theology. For example, when challenges or crisis or trials come in your life, you know, at that moment, you ask yourself, is God good? Or is God not good because he's allowing this to happen to me? You have a theology. When you pray during a storm or things going on in your life, you, the question is, does God, is God caring or uncaring? So in the midst of those storms, there's something that we believe about God that only comes out, that only comes out in the midst of a crisis or in the midst of a storm. Storms in life have the ability to bring the things that are inside out to the surface. Storms will, will expose or, or reveal to you whether you live by fear or whether you live by faith. Storms will reveal to you if your heart is full of trust or full of doubt. Storms will reveal whether you are God-reliant or if you are self-reliant. The way we react as we go through storms reveal the truth about ourselves, but also it reveals something deep within us. What do I really believe about God? And sometimes you don't know what you really believe, until you go through a storm. And you know, today in this passage, we're going to pull a few things out here. And um, I'm going to do a little bit. We're going to go through it. We'll stop. And hopefully the person you're next to, you know, just a little bit. Because I'm going to have you guys talk a little bit. Is that okay? All right. So, Cole, slide to your left or your right. Just, you know, I saw you look like, I guess I got to slide beside somebody. There you go. All right, so Mark chapter 4, we, um, here's what's going on up to this point. Large Jesus teaching, and now it's, it's reached a point where large crowds were beginning to gather around Jesus. And as you make your way through chapters 3 and 4, you find that Jesus is, as he's teaching, he's teaching, but now he's at this point where at his, it, it kind of like, at the end of a parable or teaching, he'll ask this question. He says, if anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. So look, I'm teaching you, but are you listening? In verse 24, he says, consider carefully what you hear. I'm telling you think these things about the kingdom. I'm telling you these things about the word of God. But now, consider, are you listening carefully to what I'm saying? And then you pick up in chapter 4 and verse 33. And he says, with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything, obviously, to them. Now, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind that Jesus is explaining everything to them. Keep this into the mind that they're part of the teaching. And he's saying, listen, consider carefully what you're hearing and now we pick up in chapter in, um, in verse 35, and this will be our text today, verse 35 through 41, and we'll talk about storm theology. In verse 35, and that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke up and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And the wind died down. It was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind 
and the waves obey him. You know, I read this passage here. I'm going to just have a few, just a few thoughts about it. But if you just take a second right here, before we even begin and look into it, can you see their storm theology? You can see, can you see as you read that? I see the heads nodding. Can you see kind of when the storm hit, kind of what they believe, start believing about God? Just really quick. What is the first thing that pops in your mind? No, don't share it out loud. Just share with the person beside you. What is their storm theology? What do they believe about God in the storm? Share with the person to your right or left. All right. Now, the first thing I'll say is that this passage right here is challenging because I can't swim. So just the thought of being in a boat, Derek, you can't swim either? I doggy paddle. That's all I got. At least I could do that. But I want to start here today as we discuss the storm theology. First thing is this. You ready? Here's the first thought. Storms test us. Storms, they test us. I'm going to expand that a little more. Storms test us. They test what's on the other side. And then at first, in verse 35, it says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And if you remember, right before I read this, I was trying to make the point that Jesus was teaching them. He was explaining everything to them. And I would like to believe that the disciples were pure hearted. And as they heard the word of God, they were like, yes, we believe this. We get this. But now Jesus says to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side. Now, I know literally Jesus is talking about, hey, let's go to the other side of the lake. I get that. But I think the statement also reminds me of sometimes it's also let's look, let's go to the other side of life. You see on the shore, everything was safe. See, before they got into the boat, they heard all the teaching. Life and faith was all fun. They can hear Jesus. They can walk with Jesus. They're watching Jesus do miracles and heal and do great things on the shore. But now it's time to go to the other side. And on the other side, they will find out whether all the things they heard and saw and listened to, whether they actually took root in the heart. And sometimes I realize that it's so easy on one side where it's safe, but then you get in the boat, and on the other side, when a storm hits, it really reveals, did you really get the lessons when you were on shore? See, storms test us. This is what life can be like for so many of us. On one side, we hear Jesus' teachings. We have these amazing quiet times. We read our Bibles. We memorize scripture. We walk with Jesus faithfully. We're serving. We're loving God. We're teaching other people. But as soon as the storms come, they test. Did you really believe everything you were reading? Remember all that advice you gave and you were telling people, oh, yeah, and the message, you got to trust God. But then you go through a storm. It's like you said all that, but do you really believe it for yourself when you go through a storm? Because these storms test what's really on the other side. On the one side, we all do well, don't we? The storms have a way of exposing those things. What's on the other side? We all have faith till the storm hits. You know, the storm is one of the challenges with this passage here or that I went through as I was reading through. It says, leave, you know, they, it says in verse, 30, in verse 37, a furious squall just came up. You know, one of the challenges with storms is sometimes they could be so sudden. Wouldn't it be nice if God would say, you know, I just want to let you know. Hey, Rick, you got a storm coming. it would be about three weeks from now. So if you can go ahead and prepare, the storm is coming your way. Would that be awesome? It's a whole other thing if you can prepare for, but it's another thing when it just comes just like that. You're like, I wasn't prepared for that. And I think in this passage, it says, but it wasn't just any storm. The NIV says a furious squall. 
RSV says a great windstorm. You know, one of the other translations it talks in Matthew, it describes it as a violent storm arose. The word violent comes from the Greek word seismos, where we get the word earthquake. So this wasn't just a storm. This was, these were master fishermen. They knew storm. This is like an earthquake, violent storm on the sea that just came up just like that. Suddenly, one moment, and it's like that in life, one moment you're doing fine. Next, the bottom falls out. One phone call. One phone call, everything is fine. You hang up that phone call, you're in the middle of a storm. One day you decide to go to the doctor's office. Everything is fine. You walk out of that doctor's office, you're in the middle of a storm. It could be one conversation. I came to church, things were going great. One conversation later, I'm in the middle of a storm. It could be things like COVID or health or a friend leaving God or a death, storms come just like that. These past few years, we've had a lot of those different moments just like that. One day it's this way, like, man, just one phone call later. Like, up, oh, yeah, we're in this storm. I'm like, okay, that's a storm. Okay, oh, now there's another storm. Oh, oh, now there's another storm. Oh, 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 now it's a lot of storms. You know what happens? It, it starts to ask now, you know, you get up here every Sunday and you preach, do you really believe what you're saying? Because now you're in the middle of a storm. You see, because storms test what's on the other side. That one, sudden, that one sudden storm will test everything you believe about God that's on the other side. Verse 37. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on the cushion. The disciples woke up and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care? You been there before? Of course he cares, but no, no, not now. Do you care? Do you see my life? Do you care now? See, they're being tested. In verse 40, he said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Again, just a second here. What is the storm revealing about them and their view of God? Think about that. Don't you care? That says a lot. You see, it was really quick. They went from, at one point he was Lord, but now he's teacher. It's not like they said, Lord, don't you care? At least it's like, look, I know you have something. It's like, teacher. It's like almost they forgot who he was. Teacher, don't you care? Their understanding of him was not where he needed to be. Instead of asking, Lord, can you help us? They questioned his love and concern for them. This is the temptation when we become afraid. Because of the storm allies, we see, we can see less of God than who God really is. And I think that's so true. We say, well, God is a creator. God is all powerful. Go through a storm. Well, he can't deliver me from this situation. And that's something. God can become so less, so quick in the storm. Like, what happened? He could do all these miraculous things, but now in my life, he can't do anything. What happened? All of a sudden, the storm, it exposed. I only, I don't believe that he could do this, not for me. I could feel that sometimes, right? He'll save other people. Yeah, I'll pray for you hard. But for my own self, I don't know. You know, I just got to go through this. I think that's exactly what the devil wants you to do because fear blinds you of who Jesus really is. All the things we are so confident about a day ago, an hour ago, a minute ago, just like that can change. But here's the cool thing. They didn't pass this test, but they had so many other tests to, pass, to go through. And God's like, I'm going to keep working on you. I'm going to keep putting you through storms because I'm building your faith. So I realize there's great encouragement in that, but then the question that we ask is, we got to be honest, in the, midst of this, in the midst of a storm, 
What things that I want at one time held firmly to did I let do I let go? Does that make sense? You know, and you can say we're in somewhat of a storm now. I'm not sure if we're in the middle, the beginning, or coming out. I don't know. But it's a good time to say, what did I, you know, what did I believe three years ago that I believe in the scriptures no matter what? But soon the storm gets, you get afraid. What things have we let go of? that we once anchored us? Great questions. Storms test us, but the second thing, storms also teach us. Here's a question. You know, I read my Bible like I'm having a quiet time through it, right? So I'm, these are the questions I ask. Did Jesus know that they were, that they were about to enter a storm? Think about that. They do all the stuff. They get into the boat. Did Jesus know the storm was going to come? Okay, someone shaking their head no. I saw that. I, you know, you didn't have to respond. It could have been somebody else, but you just go ahead. And... <laughs> I know you're listening, though. I got you. Let me ask you a question, another one. The first one, did Jesus know the storm was coming? The second is, why did Jesus go to sleep here? Hey, he was tired. He was exhausted. It was in the evening. He's like, why did he go to sleep? I mean, you just got to ask yourself, if, gee, I believe, as I was reading through this, I, I believe what he was teaching on the shore, the teaching never stopped. He was, he, he was still teaching something. And I, and I believe this boat ride, getting the boat, he was like, I, try, I explained everything to you. I'm teaching you. Now let's get on the boat. We're going to go through a storm. I'm going to keep teaching you. Verse 39, what were they supposed to learn? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died, and it was completely calm. Can you imagine that, just being with Jesus? The same voice that he used to silence the demons. Be quiet, be still. Can you imagine being in the middle of a storm? He says, quiet, still, and all of nature stops. I'm done. I'm done. I don't, I don't even know what to do with that. I'm like, what else you want? What would you want me to do? And the storm obeyed his voice. And I think what's happening, the disciples, and here's another thing about storms. The disciples are beginning to learn a little bit more about who Jesus is. They've never seen this type of power before. And I think that's what Jesus wants to teach us, and God wants to teach us through storms. And, and here's a question. And for us, and I'm going to give you another second here, and I'm going to go some, I, I found a few things that I've learned, I can learn about Jesus in this passage here. But in the, when you're in the middle of a storm, don't look so quick to get out of it. I just want to go. I want to be free. Let me out. Don't miss the God moment. God wants to teach you something. Because if you don't get it, the next time you act the same way in the same storm, why am I not maturing? Because you're not hearing. God is trying to teach you and mature you. So you got to stop and say, what is he trying to teach me? Because I don't want to miss it. I don't want to go through the same storm in the same way and act the same way. I want to come through it and say, wow, I, I see what Christ is doing right here. Real quick with the person beside you. What are some of the things that, I'm not going to give you a lot of time here, but what do you think that Jesus is trying to teach them? in this storm. Ready? Go. And if you're at home, you can do the same thing.
All right. All right, back to the text. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind, and then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. I think the obvious thing, I think there's a fourth on my sheet, but the obvious thing is that we can trust the Lord's power in the storm. Because sometimes the Lord ends the storm. Sometimes he lessens the storm. But sometimes he lets the storms continue to rage. In this story, Jesus decided to demonstrate his power to end the storm. And I think one of the things that I learned from this is that Jesus has the power to end the storms in my life. And I, and I, I, I need to trust in that power. And even if he doesn't end them, I know that his character isn't changed. That Jesus, I can trust. I read this, I'm thinking, man, Christ, and anytime, and here's the thing I realize, even if he doesn't quiet it on this side, there will come a time where every pain and every trial will be quieted on the other side when I'm with him, and I can trust that. Another thing is you can always trust the Lord's providence in the storm. You know, Jesus got on that boat. He knew the storm was coming. He was knocked out on a cushion. He knew everything. And I think nothing happens in, and nothing happens in this world that is just, I didn't, Jesus doesn't know what's going on, but I can trust that Jesus can work. He said, I'm working on land. I'm going to work on storm. I'm going to orchestrate all these things to bring them together because I love you. And I can trust that in the midst of all the stuff going on, he's in control. I can read this passage like Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. I can trust his providence. Another thing I got from this is that you can trust his presence. Jesus could have put him on the boat and said, I'll just walk around and meet you, meet you there. But instead he says, I'm going to go through this with you. I love that. When I go through storm, Jesus is like, you're, you're not alone. I'm right here with you. And I think that even the fact that they got up, at least they knew who to call. You know, my wife and I have these stories that if we're ever in a boat, she was like, because she swims like, she, she swim. my wife is an amazing swimmer. In the city of Detroit, in the streets of Detroit, they taught her to swim. But we always joke, we always joke, we were like, look, if we're in the water, I said, honey, you know I love you, but I know you're going to panic. I'm going to have to knock you out. But know ahead of time that I love you. That's, that's, that's called a love tap. <laughs> but, you know, there's something about Christ that when you know he's in the storm, it's like if you, even a lot of times we forget, Jesus is on the boat, he's with us, and we can remember that. Doesn't the Bible say over and over again, I will never leave you or forsake you? Even in the Great Commission, I will be with you always to the end of the age. When you go through a storm, do you, do you remember that? He is, a, he is your ever-present help in times of trouble. Psalm 46, verse 1. I, another thing, his, God is always working in the storm. He's always present. Another thing I looked at is that you can always trust the Lord's peace in the midst of a storm. While the storm was raging on the outside, Jesus was sleeping on the boat. I'm like, how can Jesus sleep in such a horrific storm? Jesus trusted his father. Storms didn't shake his faith. As God, he is the epitome of calm. The controller and orchestrator of the storm and living in conscious dependence upon his father. I think that's what I'm supposed to learn. In the middle of the storm, he's teaching us to have peace. He would say in John chapter 14, verse 27, peace, I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. I think that's what Christ wants us. And the midst of storms, be at peace. It's going to be okay. Last, if you're here in the world, ready to wrap up. Last thought, you can always trust the Lord's purpose for the storm. 
Storms don't come without a purpose. And I believe his purpose is here. It says right here, do you still have no faith? I think his purpose was to increase their faith. We know that later on they're going to do greater things, but they got to have their faith increased. You know, the last thought here on this one, this may be a jump, but I look in verse 36. Something that's not in the other gospels or in the other accounts. It says, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And I think the other thing is you can trust in the Lord's plan. I think it doesn't say a lot here, but it says that there were other boats on that same thing with him. And Christ always has a plan to save lives. And it may be a stretch. They may not have got the teaching, but at the same time, that they were in the same squall that they were in. So they might have been screaming too, and their lives got saved. And sometimes we got to have faith because I, just what I walk away from is we, I got to trust God because sometimes it'll affect the other people. I may know it. I may not even know it. But I know that God is, all, God is working through all that. So here's my, here's my thought for you is to take time, take time this week to journal. What is God teaching you either in the midst of a storm or as you've gone through a storm? And I want you to write it down and then go share it with someone. Just call somebody randomly. Pat, man, Pat, I just want to share with you, man. I, I was, here's my storm theology. Here's things that God is teaching me in the midst of storms right now. You know, I think that's, and we need that from one another. The last thing here as we wrap up. Storms test us, they teach us, but they also stretch us. In verse 40, 41, it says, they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Do you see what the storms produced? They started to ask, who is this? Up to this point, the disciples knew Jesus was special and unique, and that God was working through him. However, now, they're having this whole paradigm shift in their thinking about who Jesus is. They seen they heard of prophets in the past who performed various miracles, healing the sick, cleansing lepers, even dividing the Red Sea. But this is different for the first time. Who they realize only God does this. Who is this? Their faith is being stretched. Storms, part of it's supposed to stretch your view of God. They're beginning to see him beyond the teacher, beyond the rabbi. And as you keep reading, spoiler alert, I'll give you a little spoiler alert here, right? Right here in this passage, like, who is this guy who controls nature? The next section, there's four in a row. The next section, who is this man who, who just tells demons and legion just to, he has power over demons. The next part, who is this man who has power over disease? And there's a young girl who dies. Who is this man who has power over death? What's happening is they're being stretched. He's no longer just a teacher, but he has power over nature, over disease, over life and death. Who is this? This is Jesus. And that's what storms are supposed to do for us. We walk away and says, I love Jesus more. I see him differently. And we got to wrestle with those things. We had a meeting recently, and I was, and a sister was there. And, I, and this is why it's so important that we get this. There was a mature sister, and we're talking about all these things. And one of the sisters was sharing, and all of a sudden, she shares. And she just says very, like, yep, we went through that before, years ago. And she's so calm about it. And then she just kind of, yep, got to work through that as well. And I said, see, that's, that's why when you go through storms, you got to come out faithfully on the other side. Because somebody, someone who's going to be freaking out on the boat would need to hear you say, yep, that person's faith has been stretched. <laughs> you think that's something? Let me tell you about 1994. You know? You got that one? Let me tell you where I was in 2003. How long? You been a Christian for a year? Oh, you ain't seen nothing. But that's the type of, you want your, your faith to be stretched. Where it's like, but the world is coming to an end. God, that means Jesus is coming. It's a perspective. All perspective. Amen. We're all headed into a storm, in the middle of a storm, or coming out of, a, out of one. Let us, church, let's learn from our storms.
God is teaching us something about himself, about ourselves, about himself. And as we go through, we all have a storm theology. Let's refine it. Let's improve it. And let's use it for God's glory. Let's see these, uh, these storms as an opportunity to see God grow in our lives and our faith. Guys, let's, let's grow together in this world.